All right, so this is part two of the Cheapo Linear Rail video, and I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time with an intro with my face. I'm just gonna plunk everything in a timeline and Mark Hamill a voice over here. Because I promised that I would do an update when my third rail came in and I could use uh, Super Lube and change the bearings out, so here we go. So I don't like recommending things that I haven't tried or don't have a source for for you people. So even though I had nice bearings from McMaster Car and somewhere in the depths of the basement, a bottle of Super Lube that was probably like 20 years old, I wanted to grab a couple in that I knew that you could source. So I hopped on Amazon and I found these bearings that I'm gonna try out here and this tiny little bottle of Super Lube because you don't need an entire gigantic tube of it for like 15 bucks just for this stuff. And I wanted to do this as option three, because if you remember from the last video, the two rails that I tried, first one, I did a three in one slash SAE 20 oil. And for the second one, I used a DuPont Teflon grease. So let's see how Super Lube compares. But before we get into that, I want to touch on a few things that were brought up by viewers of the last video, either uh, interesting alternatives or things I had thought of that type of thing. And I, I should have dug up everybody's names, but I didn't. So sorry about that. Somebody brought up lithium spray as an alternative, and I think that would probably work out fairly well. This is what I have, and it's not something that popped into my mind because I had had bad luck with it with bearings in the long, long ago past. But as you can see right here, it goes on kind of foamy and it's not super thick like a grease, but it's not super thin like a thin oil. So I can't give it a thumbs up or thumbs down because I haven't tried it on this, but it may be something that's worth trying. And it would be easier since it's a spray on can to use just the, you know, spray through flush out method I used for the three in one oil in the last video, as opposed to completely disassembling it, cleaning it and repacking it with grease. Another suggestion was like Rollhoff hub oil, which is probably pretty good. It's like a thicker oil. Um, something like uh, bar and sprocket oil is probably about the same thing or like Phil's tenacious oil, which I'm pretty sure is just bar and sprocket oil with a couple additives. So if you want to go the oil route, that might be a good option because those are particularly, you know, sticky, I guess you could say oils. I also grabbed some proper three in one SAE 20 oil. It's almost identical to the regular three in one. And then there's other options like the three in one PTFE stuff, which I haven't tried and things like TriFlow, but these tend to be synthetic oil based and they're a little bit thinner. So that type of thing you might have to reapply more often. I would probably steer you clear from those and into something a little bit thicker. Another thing that came up from a viewer was rail deviation, as in like tolerance, straightness tolerance. And apparently these can sag under their own weight. These are not super stiff. That was, I kind of went over that with the V-rail versus the linear guideway type thing in the last video. You can actually flex these with your hands. You can feel them flexing a little bit. Whereas like the V-rail you can't, but there is a much tighter straight uh, straightness tolerance on like the high wind type rails. These cheapy ones, they tend to be a little bit more bendy, it seems, and definitely have not nearly as high a tolerance. So that's something to bear in mind if you have two parallel light rails and you're using them on longer axes where they might be sagging a little bit under their own weight. He had proposed a jig so you can dug through the comments and check that out if you want. Also, I wasn't sure if I made it clear or not, but I just used heavy silicone spray on the rails themselves to keep them from corroding. It's something that I've had a lot of luck with in the past and in the present, actually. So that's just what I'm going to be going with. I'm sure there's a, any variety of things that will work, but this is what I'm comfortable with. Back in the day, to bring things back to bicycles again, I used to work in a little bike shop down at the shore that rented out bikes over the summertime. And the regular single speed cruiser type bikes that we get in and do the rentals, they came with mild steel spokes. They weren't stainless steel spokes. So the salt water uh, would just corrode them to crap within a couple of weeks if you didn't do something to it. So what we would do is just at the beginning of the season when we pulled them out of the box and put them together before rental, repack the bearings with decent grease and then spray the spokes down with silicone spray. And that was good enough to keep the sand and the salt and the, you know, all the horrible humidity down there um, from killing the spokes like through an entire season. So that kind of meant it's good enough for me. It's also what I use in the outside of my uh, single speed urban commuter bike, which is just bare Reynolds steel and nothing else but silicone spray. And I don't have any problems there. Oh, and T9 on the inside of the frame and on the chain, if you were interested. So anyway, I got this third rail from the same place, uh, just got them on Banggood. They're not on super duper sale anymore, but they're still pretty cheap. But one thing that I noticed, as opposed to the first two that I got together, is these are much higher quality. I, I won't say much higher quality. They're, they were definitely, the machining was a lot better on these. So I guess it's kind of a mixed bag. Even though it's with the same source and the same brand, they are slightly different. 
it's a little hard to show in this picture, but the race is a lot smoother than it was. And the uh, boreholes where I had that, you know, that one line where the machine didn't quite match up isn't here. And I'll stick this underneath a microscope so you can see that. So you can see the machining is not fantastic, but it doesn't have that hard non-matched up line like it did on the other ones. And then if you look at the race, it's still a little bit rough, but it's a lot better than the, uh, than the previous ones that I had that had much bigger, deeper pock marks in it. Not to say that this is like good machining by any stretch of the imagination, but it is better than the other ones. So anyway, with my little bottle of super lube in hand, I tore it open and got to work. And, uh, these I'll, I'll link everything down in the, um, video descriptions. You can see the Amazon link to the lube and the bearings and the rails and the whole nine yards. Um, these came with just the regular grease, like the other ones zip tied on the ends, just like the other ones. And these are the bearings that I grabbed from Amazon marked them so I wouldn't mix them up with all the other stupid bearings that I have here. And then I'll just do a little test right here to see what the viscosity of this grease was compared to the other stuff that I have. Smear it around a little bit with a razor blade and just see how it looks. First thing, I can tell you it smells a lot better than this Teflon grease, but I also noticed it's, it's a lot thinner. It's like almost like a thick oil type consistency. And I know they do have viscosity ratings, but sometimes they're full of crap. So I don't believe it until I pull it out and smear it around myself to see. So it'll be interesting to see what happens once I get it together. I suspected when I pulled this out that it would probably not do as much noise damping as the Teflon lube did, um, but it would probably be at much less of a risk of the bearings like uh, getting stuck and not turning. And I did notice on here that it said 48 penciled inside, whereas both of the other ones said like uh, 254 or 256 or 246 or something like that. But regardless, uh, these bearings seem to move okay on their own. And one of the things that a viewer, uh, Julian, had said in the comments was that uh, on some of these, this little retainer clip that you can see was binding up on the sides and not letting them turn. So I just wanted to double check that, make sure everything was moving smoothly. And these appear to be just fine. And I'll just skip through the disassembly, greasing, reassembly, since I did that in the last video. If you really want to watch it again, you can just go back and watch it. I was really interested to get these out and see if, because of the different batch and the different tolerances, if the bearings were any better than the other ones. And these are actually slightly better. They're 2.35 as opposed to 2.32, but that's still not quite the 2.38 that they should be if they were right on, which is what these bearings that I got from Amazon are. So I just dumped these out count them all and uh, go to town. If you recall from the last video, um, these have 66 bearings total per cart, 33 per side. So a bag of 100 will do, you know, one cart plus you'll have a couple extras rattling around. So just like the last time, took this apart, um, flushed it out with solvent, flushed that out with some oil just to make sure that any of the nastiness and the debris from manufacturing was out of there. And then put a light film of uh, super lube on all the bearings Put a little bit in each of these holes that the bearings run through just so they'd be pulled through that. And then after I put it together, um, I also put a little bit of super lube on the top, uh, rotated the bearings once completely around, put some more on it, rotated it again, and then just stuck the rail in. And if you recall with the lithium grease, I had to cycle the rail a few times before the balls were rolling instead of just scraping along. Uh, I suspected that this would just roll immediately because it's a lot thinner and they did just start rolling immediately. And as I suspected that this grease doesn't have as much sound damping as the lithium grease did, which you'll be able to hear here in a second. So let me do a com sound comparison with uh, first just the stock oil that comes with it, then with the super lube, and then with the uh, DuPont Teflon grease. <laughs> So I don't have a long-term verdict yet, but I suspect all of these will work fine in their own way. As a um, initial kind of observation, the stock oil is thin and meh, and you should get rid of it regardless because it is dirty. As you remember from the last video, I did find some metal slag when I flushed the bearings and the races clean, like you can see here. So that is something you definitely want to get rid of and then repack them. After I cleaned them with solvent and then flushed that with WD-40, I then used a light synthetic lubricant with uh, Teflon in it. And that's not good for long term. I don't think with these, that's not typically something you would lube bearings with unless you had it constantly recirculating or you were going to redo it like once a week or something like that. And that's just kind of too messy for 3D printers. 
SAE 20 or three in one oil or any kind of like medium machine oil or heavy machine oil, that should be fine. Uh, it's not going to stick to the bearings as well as a grease will. It's going to run off of your surfaces, especially if you have it set perpendicularly. So that's something you're going to have to spend more time maintaining. You'll have to uh, redo it more often, but it's easier to just squirt into the little, you know, opening to, to relube them. And then a step up from that in terms of not having to spend as much time maintaining them is something, the super lube that I just put in here. Uh, it's not nearly as thick as like the, the lithium stuff, but it's not thick enough that you're going to make your bearings bind up. So it's a little bit more set and forget than an oil because it's going to cling to the bearings a little bit better. Although it didn't damp the annoying sound on the cheap races as much as I would have liked. So then there's the option of like PTFE, like lighter lithium grease, i.e., you know, pure white Teflon grease, that sort of thing. And unfortunately, the stuff I like isn't available anymore, but there is this that some people have recommended, or you can go with some of the fancier lubes directly from DuPont as well. Just make sure that if you do that, that you go with one that's particularly well formulated for this type of thing. You probably want the lightest one possible to make sure that your bearings circulate. Because as we went over in the last video, these are not bearings in a race. These are free bearings. So uh, if you get too heavy a grease in there, just the viscosity is going to keep them from spinning like they're supposed to. And they're going to jam up, especially if you have the uh, kind of looser tolerances that we do on these cheap rails where they're not making absolute contact with both surfaces all the time. And then there's the spray lithium grease, which is a little bit lighter than even the super lube and any of the heavy oils, the machine oils, the, the bar and chain, tenacious oil, that type of stuff, which should probably work fine too. And let me quickly reiterate the no-no list in case somebody comes wandering into this video and didn't watch the whole of the first one. These are the ones that you absolutely should not use. Do not use WD-40 unless you plan on spraying it every single freaking day. It's just a petroleum oil thinned out with a solvent and then a couple alkalines in there to prevent corrosion. That also applies to other thin film sprays. That's not what you want to use on bearings. Also, things like graphite, molly grease, and silica grease, those have hard particles in there that are going to chew up your bearings, particularly with our bad races that we have in here. Thick grease is out of the question as well because it'll keep your bearings from rolling and it'll just chew up your rails and your races very quickly. Also, anything that will attack the plastic end caps, the composition of those are going to vary from, you know, one linear rail to another linear rail, but just be mindful of that. And you don't want anything that's really tacky and sticky and is going to attract dirt and grit because that's going to get into your bearings and chew them up as well. Now, in terms of the bearings, they I wasn't sure if this was going to bind up because of the, the uh, roughness of the races and that type of thing, but I did put the larger bearings in there and it didn't bind up. It still moves pretty well. And it also took some of the play out of it. They didn't take the play out of it perfectly. So, I mean, if there were an ever so slightly larger bearing, I mean, that might work out as well. But there was a lot, quote, a lot less play than with the stock small bearings. So long-term testing is a coming, but as it is sits right now, in terms of my initial impressions of the three different things that I tried, Medium to heavy oil is fine. It has the least work up front because you don't have to take it apart to repack it properly. You can flush it out with lube and then squirt it in, uh, but it's going to be the most work in the long run. It's also going to be the messiest, but that's fine if you also use it to uh, lubricate your rails and keep those from corroding. Since it's all the same stuff, you could just kind of put it on there. Then there's Super Lube, which is silicone based and Teflon impregnated. And that's fine if you're going to use silicone and rails anyway, like that's a thing that you could do. Just make sure you don't put on too much and thin out your grease because it's already fairly thin grease. I don't know how well that's going to hold on to there in an open race type of environment like we have, but it seems to be okay up front and it didn't cause the bearings to bind. And then the third option I tried was PTFE impregnated lithium grease. Definitely the quietest by far. It's the most work up front. Um, it's, but it's going to be the least work in the long run, but it's definitely going to stick to the bearings better stay in the races. Use it, make sure you don't pack it in too tight and make sure you cycle the cart on the rail by hand for a few minutes to make sure that the bearings are moving around before you run it under load. Cause otherwise you may just be scraping up your rails, especially in a part that doesn't have a bottom load if they're mounted perpendicularly. Personal opinion of the three options, I like the uh, li lighter lithium with Teflon option the best. I don't know if that would work for everybody, but I seem to just have a gut feeling that that'll work better in the long run. As I said, we shall see since I'm going to be using all three of these. 
Alrighty, so that's it for now. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer as best I can whatever I have knowledge about. And if you're interested in this and you want to support me, I always have support links down in the video descriptions below. Thanks a lot, and we'll catch you in the next video.